talk about smart city, we talk about digital revolution, but we are not doing all of that. For this city particularly, we know that uh, the children are very badly affected already. Every third child has impaired lungs. We now know that because of air pollution, we are living, uh, we are even losing our, uh, uh, the years that we uh, live of your exposure to the tailpipe, especially diesel exhaust, right? And how that is affecting the brain, the fetus, the, you know, the, um, uh, leading to cancer. And it's, and it's scary when the doctors in the city are saying that we are beginning to see childhood obesity taking an epidemic portion, that even a type 2 diabetes and this kind of metabolic diseases are emerging among the young people. And you just want to take away the whole activity out of the city just because you want to pamper cars. What are we asking for at the end of the day? You know, what you really need to understand about vehicles, because it's a very typical question everyone asks, that how much cars are contributing. And if you really look at uh, the data emerging, and we already have a source apportionment study from IIT Kanpur, where it's saying that overall, vehicles contribute about 20%, and at 20 of the particulate matter, the PM2.5, and of that at 20%, it's the second highest polluter. Within that 20%, uh, the cars are then a lesser, okay, which is about 10% of what they will say. But keep in mind, if cars are 10%, then construction activity, waste burning, these are also just 2 to 3% each, okay? So certainly cars are emitting more. And let us not get misled by this 10%, 2%, 5%, because when you are making a pie chart, Okay, the entire pie gets divided into so many different pollution sources. From public health perspective, what matters most is how close you are to the source of pollution. So there might be a Badapur power plant in Delhi, right? But the stack is not under your nose. But when you're traveling on the road, you live close to the roadside, then the tailpipes and the millions and thousands of tailpipes are right under your nose. And that's the reason why your personal exposure to very toxic emissions from vehicles is very, very high. In Delhi, today we have the data, and there's a scientific study that says that the maximum impact of vehicular pollution is up to 500 meters from roadside. When you apply that criteria to Delhi the way it is, then they found that more than 55% of Delhi's population live within 500 meters from some roadside. So therefore understand that if you are loading your roads with so many vehicles and tailpipes, then what is doing to your health? And very recently I've heard that air pollution today is even getting into the placenta of the, you know, the womb of the mother. So where do we position cars? Understand that when you're talking about congestion today, then when you're out on the road, what is the congestion? It's the personal vehicles, cars and two wheelers they make up about more than 70% of the traffic that you see on the road. Nothing else makes up so many numbers, right? But the scary part of it is that when you are out on the road and you see your roads completely clogged with cars and two-wheelers, but these are carrying just about 15% of the trips daily. So it means just to carry the minority population of this city you have completely clogged and taken over the road space. If you look at the current network of roads in Delhi and the demand for parking, you need some space to park your cars, then you have already used up one third of Delhi's land area. But what people don't pay attention to is that even the road design and the urban design may also compel you to become dependent on your personal vehicle. Because there is no connectivity in most part of the neighborhoods with a proper, efficient, reliable public transport service. So by design of the public policy, you have been made captive user of the car. And that's the worrying part of what is happening today. Because you may be rich, you might have owned a car, but you don't necessarily have to use the car every day for your daily commuting, if you have good options. Because the moment you start talking about restraint on car usage, 
okay and you just know the car owner I mean, this going to be you know the pushback from the car owners is going to be enormous and we have been seeing this in delhi because we work because our children go to school and colleges so every day the number of travel trips that we are generating in this city already adds up to 4 crore out of that 4 crore today metro is perhaps carrying 27 lakh dtc is carrying perhaps another 30 lakh you are talking about lakhs okay whereas the actual travel is 4 crore that is happening so imagine with if you are hoping that a day will come that the entire 4 crore trip you if you really set a level of that mindless ambition that we can actually have cars moving all those trips okay when currently it's only 15% of the trips that are being carried by car and you're already gridlocked and the city is becoming unlivable right this city will simply come to a stand to that's the best way to kill a city car free is not real it's it's a concept it's an idea it's an ideology but it is it kind of defines a principle that can i be in my city without my car right and yet i'm mobile i'm efficiently mobile i'm reliably mobile car free concept today is now about 20 year 21 year old okay as kind of taken roots in different parts of the world it's kind of celebrated uh, it, it's uh, practiced as an annual event we are raising this more as can this be a defining parameter for your public policy on mobility where you are going to scale up travel options in such a way that it is going to simultaneously reduce your dependence on personal vehicles if you look at some of the richest cities in the world whether you're looking at london paris or uh, the scandinavian cities you will find that with their policies they have actually demonstrated and they've shown increase in public transport modal share and they have reduced car modal share even when we are seeing this disaster in the making right 77% of indians are still walking cycling and using public transport so here london paris that celebrating a number like 40% and here you already have a super impressive baseline of 77% is because many people in our country are too poor to even afford a public transport right so they are still walking they are still cycling challenge for us is not so much to bring cars people who have already moved to cars yes you need to bring them back as much as you can but but more important to retain people and stop people from transiting from a bus to a car or from a metro to a car we talk about it but we never see public demand for public transport so the moment a decision is taken to somehow control usage of cars whether it's odd and even which is temporary or even try and increase the parking charges the hell break loose for you and me what matters is our journey cost right now if you are designing a public transport system in such a way that there is metro somewhere there is a bus somewhere then there is a three wheelers and none of them are integrated either physically integrated so that my transfer from one system to another system becomes very convenient that i just step out and step in now because we have not done those systems what happens that we are penalized every time we are changing the system to complete our journey so to go from off uh, home to office you first take an auto or a bus to a metro station then you take a metro then you get off take another bus or a e rickshaw to reach your office every time you are doing this it is adding to your cost and when you look at the affordability and you should not be paying more than the 15% of your uh, income right but if you really add up you find that perhaps just boarding metro the metro itself will use up your 14% of your income and then the interchange as i said that you become a captive user of car also by design i and you personally will start using the car if we find that just reaching the metro station has become so tough that every time i want to go there i have to climb a three story uh, uh, foot over bridge it's so inconvenient for me if somebody is carrying a child if you're carrying a heavy uh, laptop or you bus children carrying a heavy school bag 
So which means you're not designing for the convenience of people's movement. You're only designing for the convenience of vehicles' movement. Why, as you just said, that the cycling is becoming difficult because of the whole modal conflict that is happening, okay? Because it's so unsafe for people to walk and cycle. So the other fallout of this is the more you design for cars, that means you have more flyovers, you remove people, you don't have footpaths, you shrink your footpaths, you do not want hawkers. So the moment you start removing activities because you want only vehicles, right? This is also making your city so unsafe for everyone. That means the dead of night, the evening, all of these fringes are then inactive. There is no eye on the street and that's where the crime happens. So this whole interconnectedness, the joining the dots, as we keep saying, okay, this doesn't happen. And that's where we are going so much, so terribly wrong. If you are removing thousands and millions of tailpipe uh, from a city, it's certainly bound to reduce your exposure. But the point is we need now proper systems in place so that movement and mobility becomes convenient for all and affordable for all.